So who I am? I'm Martin. I'm the organizer of Montreal Ruby. I'm working at a company called Telco Bridges on, on the South Shore. And I want to talk to you about RailsBridge before I start everything. So RailsBridge, I'm not sure who heard about it before. So the people from, from Ruby, that's not too bad. So uh, RailsBridge is, is a core that we gave about Ruby and Ruby on Rails for every level of developers. So the first level is for learning programming. So last time we had it, we had like 60 years old of difference between the, the youngest people and the, and the oldest person. That's pretty nice. So they just come here, they just come over there to start learning about programming. It's one and a half, that's pretty nice. And then you have the middle level, which is introduction to Rails, which is introduction to web development. So you can do the same thing with Django. And the last one is advanced Rails, so more you learn more like libraries and other stuff that you are needed to be, sorry, to be able to do real web development. That's it. Why we are here, Rails versus Django. So first thing I want to say is that if you know Rails, you really don't need to know Django. Okay, no tomato? Okay, I'm good. I say that because if you, if you know Django, you don't need to know Rails either. So that's pretty much equal. I think that because for me, both framework are equal or equivalent. They don't do the same, they do pretty much the same thing. They all have their own opinion, do different things. But in the end, they do the same job. If you prefer Python, use Django. If you prefer Ruby, use Rails. That's pretty much the trick. So in the end, it's the Python, the Ruby. But, I'm all, I hope at least we can agree on the next one, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm all, okay, I, it's over for the jokes. So let's do some translation. Django on the right, Rails on, on the left. So what you call a model, we also call it a model. That one is easy. Next one. What you call a template is what we call a view. So just remember that. If I say view, it really means a template for you. But if I'm, if I'm speaking about controllers, it means views for you. So this one is kind of ugly. And the last one, URL and routes, it one's pretty easy. It's really the view that is harder to understand. A little bit of tools tra tra translation. PyP, as I understand, is our equivalent of RubyGems, is, is where all our libraries are when we download them from. PIP is your library, the downloader, how you manage your stuff. We use Bundler for it. And it's also make us a, a production environment. So if you have multiple library in the same host, each Rails project will run with its own library. I'm not sure if PIP do the same thing. I didn't catch that part. Uh, PDB, which is your debugger, for us it's called debugger or byte bug. Byte bug is for Ruby 2.0, the other one is for 1.9 or 1.8. And the last one is uh, RVM, which is our RVM install 1.9.3, which is not the Ruby version. We don't use the, the package manager of the OS. We use RVM or RBN to do it. I think, you, you are, you, I think it's virtual env that use the uh, package manager. And by, by NV, is, it was started from Ruby environment. So I think it's the same, the same idea in the, the back. So if we continue, in Django, you use like generic templates. So it means that you build your views from scratch and you put everything in it. In Rails, we can use scaffolding, which will generate all what we need for our project, uh, for, which project for the part of our project we're needing. So it will create for us the models, the controller, and the views. If you talk to any advanced Rails programmer, it will tell you it doesn't use it anymore because it gives you too much messy code that you don't want to support in the long run. But if you're starting, it's just pretty nice to have it. That's one, the models, uh, which is what you use as an ORM, as I saw from, uh, from the Django website. For us, it's called Active Record, which was built in Rails at the start, but it's now extracted from Rails. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so it's the ORM, so managing everything from uh, foreign key to uh, methods on, on, the, on the object and stuff like that. Next one, admin interface, which is by default with Django. We don't have that with Rails. If you want to have something similar, we can include a library called Active Admin. It will give you an admin, admin panel in the back. But most of the Rails projects don't have admin built in from them. You, you are, we always built in from scratch. Uh, authentication, which you have by default in Django. We use another library called Device. 
for Rails. It's the classic one, the one that's more, the most used. Your authorization, which is by default also, we use CanCan, which is another library. So even if normally Rails run tests, there is more convention in it, you have more features in the framework that we have for different needs that you have to build a, a, web, a web application. And the last one is South, which is, will be in your, included in Django in the next version. For us, we have migrations since a long time that do everything we need in, in, for the migrations. And at the bottom, what I add, what's what I, I understand from both framework, Django was built for server speed, and Rails was built for programming speed. So when, with Rails, normally it will take you less time to write the, 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 web, the website, but it will be slower to run on your host. So that's the main difference between both frameworks, is that they don't have the same basic idea at the start. Let's talk a little bit about Rails, since you already know, know Django. Just want to talk a little bit about the magic or the convention that we have. So what happens is just we have some rules that we need to follow so the framework will work. It's, they're not written anywhere except in the documentation. You just need to know them. That's kind of how it is. So project types, which is a kind of model that I have that is called project type. And it will always be in the, in the file app models project type.rb all the time. That's by convention, it's always, always be there. It's controller, if you want to do save on it, it will always be in app controllers project types controller.rb. It's not that stupid as a convention. Our views will be in app views project types, and the views will be there, or the templates. And the database, the table will, call, will be called project types. The ID is ID, and if you have another foreign key like on project, it will be project underscore ID. Like if you were using project type as an ID in the database, it will be project type ID with underscore between each. So that's the convention. And lastly, the routes, they will always be in config slash routes for the whole application. So if we continue with the routes, so resources, column, project types. We create all the RESTful routes that we need for project types. RESTful, RESTful, RESTful is what Rails use as, a, as the basic thing. We always use RESTful routes most of the time. So you get get of the localhost 3000 is the default uh, URL for Rails. I don't know which one you use for Django. But for Rails, we use, always use port 3000 by default. So if you go on get project types, you go the index or the list of all the project types that are available. If you do slash new on that, it will be the view to create a new one. As you can see at the same time, it will check, it will create the, the method called project in project types controller. The method called new will be invoked automatically if you go to that path. And at the same time, the view that will be loaded will be in add views project types new.html.erb, which is the default view also. So everything is there at the start, so you don't need to do a lot of routing inside your code. Everything is there already. So post of project types, which means that you want to create a new one. If you do get on project type slash one, we'll give you an edit of the, of the project type with the ID one. And if you do slash edit, uh, uh, sorry, if you have slash edit, it's the edit. If you don't have slash edit, it's the show one. That I, honestly, I don't really use the show action really often, except if you have like admin user views, but most of the time, every normal one is admin, so I always, most of the time, I'll use edit. And the last one, if you have post patch on the, what the same one as show, which will be an update. And put patch normally don't exist uh, with browser, so it's a post request with an external attribute telling you which one it is. And delete is the same thing. So I heard that it's a little bit tricky to do routes in Django, so I give you like three examples that do exactly the same thing, so you have the choice. The first one, say get on slash project type slash column ID, which means to be the, you put it in the controller project types, the action show, and the attribute ID will be the one that got extracted from the line. Second one is the same idea, but instead of putting controller in action, we use the, the, the way I showed the last, the last one. So the controller is on the left, and after the sharp, you get the action. And the last one is you can call resources, but just limit it to only one, 
one of the methods will show. You can uh, uh, you have also except, which means you have all of them except one, depending on which one you want to have. And another thing that's really neat is the nested routes. So if you have resource posts do, which is create a block, we could resource comments, because this is how we do normally uh, each in Ruby. It will create you, it give you two examples. So the first one post will give you the post slash one view for it. And you also have sla post slash one comments slash one, which means which mean you want to see the post one, the comment with the ID one in it. So it just means that comments are inherited from post. So you need to have a post to be able to have a comments in your route. So this is how Rails define which you should build your URL. So another thing that's neat is that the framework will autoload your, 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 your classes. So if you want to access project type for the first time, just type project type and, it will be, and the framework will just search in the right file. So this is why the file is called project type.rb because Rails now know how to, to, to find it. This is why we have the convention. So you don't need to have your, the import or require in Ruby. It's the framework do it for you directly. We have, when you create a new Rails application, you have the default git in your. So you just commit in git directly. Everything is what needs to be in your is already in your. So you don't need to mess around with it. It's already built. And the views mime type is another tricky thing that is fun with views. So if you get, if you want to accept project types, the list, it will give you the HTML mime by default, so the HTML view. But if you do project types.json, it will give you the JSON representation of the same data. So you don't need to have another, another controller or other codes to do the same thing. You just load the same data, and the mime that the framework will support by default will change it for you. The asset pipelines, this one is pretty nice. So in development, all your assets, JavaScript, stylesheet, will be in their own files, and so, you can be, so it's easier to work with them. When you go into production, the framework compress them, compile them, and combine them. So you finish with one JavaScript file and one stylesheet already compressed in your production environment. So you don't need to like pre-compile everything, it's the framework manage that for you. And the thing is, Tricky is if you put an instant variable inside your controller to be passed on to the views. So this is how you send variables to views. So you just need to know it. And another thing that you don't have in Django is that query params are transparent. So params is the global variable that lets you access to any attributes from the route or from any query params. So you just you need to know it. I know in Django you have another, you have one variable for the URL params and another one with, for the query params. So what is the pros about the convention? So it's faster to develop because you don't need to write a lot of routing thing inside your code. Rest take care of the, of the reloading. It's a lot easier to write, to write to see someone else's application because it will be built as the same thing as yours. Uh, it's easier to write gems. This is why we have so much libraries for Rails that everyone has the same code, the same structure, so you can inject your code easily in any application, and this is what people will expect you to do because they, you use the same, the same structure as what you expect. And it's things easier for newcomers because you don't need to manage all that things. On the other side, the counts. So the first one you need to know and very, very much better understand the convention this is code This is running in the background. It's not really magic. But it can be a lot harder to, to find. This is why debugger is pretty cool, because you can see, you can in, go directly in the framework and see what is going on, so you can better understand the convention and be able to debug your, your stuff at the same thing. And it's harder for Rails newcomer, because you need to know the convention. Pretty much go with the first point. Just got uh, some libraries that we're using. Maybe I will just talk to them about them a little bit. First one is the device, which is authentication. It's pretty easy. Uh, authorization, can can declarative authorization in Relify. Uh, if you go on a website called Ruby Toolbox, you get all the frame, all the all tools libraries on there, and they are classified by popularity on by GitHub for GitHub. Uh, download and stuff like that. So we can know by just doing that, that Ken Ken has like 75% of the Rails market. So if you want to do authorization, go with Ken Ken. Device is like 95% or something. So if you want to do authentication, you use device by default. Uh, views, you, I told you that you can have 
have a like view, a like show that HTML dot ERB, which is one of the of the compiler for your views. So I think you for your templates you use something like mustache. For rest, you can choose which one you have. You can you have ERB, AML, Slim, or any other one that are defined as a library. You just need to get you put the right end at the line that's at the at the end of the file, and Rails would run the good parser to understand what you want in your view. And by the way, Slim and AML are using the same thing as Python that you don't need to close your brackets, so it's just using the indentation to close HTML, which is personally what I prefer when I write the HTML tags. And we just talk about test. In Ruby, we have a lot and a lot of uh, libraries to do it. That's just not comparable to anything, I, any other uh, language, I think. And if you need anything, it's probably on GitHub already. Uh, probably, I think it's the same thing for you with Python and Django. But for, for us, it's just if you search something, just GitHub and the name, and you probably find uh, two, three libraries for it. Just want to talk a little bit about test. For me, I think Ruby is the R&D for test framework because we have a lot of them. We make a lot of tests with them. Main reason is that in Ruby, you can inject code at, in any class or any instance of a class at any point in the execution. So if you just say, I, I got like my, my HTTP class that have a get method that will, get, that will do some IO, you can just say to the, in my test, you will receive, a, a, will, someone will call get on you. When that happens, do nothing and return success as a string. So it's pretty like you just mark everything you want inside the object, even if the code is badly written, you can still test it because you can inject everything everywhere in it. Normally you should build it that is easier to test, but if you are really stuck with it, you can do it. Just before I finish, some funny things that I saw. Django admin customization. It's our kind of work like REST convention. You need to reuse the right file name at the right place so the framework will load them automatically and you will be able to customize your views with it. REST do exactly the same thing, but for everything. Your file format with different app in it, this is what we call also a Rails engine. So Rails engine is like other Rails app that you can inject in your own app. And the last thing, Python and Django are older than Rails and Ruby. Python by 10 years and Django by about six months. Uh, this is from Wikipedia dates, so I suppose they are good. And you're always wondering which one was the oldest. So why I like Rails? Because it's fun, most of the main reason. I'm coding mainly in Rails just because I have fun doing it. Uh, the automatic management of assets is a big pro that you have with it. It's really easy to deploy because Ruby developer really like, really hates to do redundant stuff, so we create libraries like Chef to be able to deploy easily. The community is pretty nice, and it's bleeding edge. So it's when you, you, something new appears, most of the time we get, get injected in Ruby or in Rails because we, are, we have other libraries that will do something similar just because we, we like to try new stuff. And it's easy to get in a new project. When you're a consultant, that's really fun. The drawbacks, so I'm using a framework, but I'm sure you're using Django, you have your own things that you don't like about it. Probably you have the same thing for me for the first one. It's really slow. It's really slow to execute compared to anything else. You can pass it on with JRuby on the Java GVM, but still it's not the same. The ORM, Rails says that your foreign key should be in the framework and not in the database. I do not agree with that. So for me, I use a, a library called Foreigner, and with my migrations, I always put my foreign key in the database as I put them in my ORM. So I'm sure that I cannot mess up my database by accident. And if someone else, you want to use the same database, they won't, they won't break my code. So this is one of the things that is in Rails that I don't like. And the other thing is that you need to know, the, to know the libraries. If you want to do authentication, you have to use device. That's just not negotiable. This is how it is. So if you're a newcomer, don't know Rails, you need to ask someone or check on forums to know which one are the best or check the Ruby toolbox. Last one is not about Rails. It's MySQL notarization. So if you do a migration in Rails and it fails, it will try to revert what you did. But with MySQL, since there is no transaction, it's still there like half done. So you need to clean it by end in the database or you need to comment your migration in your migration file, which is which I don't like. 
Yeah, Postgres has transactions, so you don't, you don't have problem with it. And the last thing is nowadays, they, we have skinny controller fat models, which is the last, not the last thing, maybe two years ago, but we, don't, we didn't find any problem with any solution to it except services for now. So skinny controller fat model means that your controller are as small as possible, and you put all your logic and your code in your models. But that means that your model, normal, most of the time, has too much information in them, so they are not there anymore to just save or load the object. They are there to do a lot more stuff than that. So, so now I use services, which means it's more like BDD kind of thing. So your service, like my user, want to do this, so my service will just do that, and that's over. And if I want, if my user want to do something else with my project types, I will have another service by the by the side of it that will just describe what what my user want to do. That was pretty much what I had to tell you about Rails. What else do you want to know about it? <laughs>